Welcome to Unknown Kazakhstan. My name is Daniel Glumov and I am a discovery hunter. Climbing up to the very top in order to plunge into the very bottom. Reeling up hundreds of kilometers in order to wind off hundreds of years. The unknown KZ crew already has a trace of sensational discoveries behind it, shared by self-sacrificing scientists and desperate travelers. Who is going to be the next one to bring another mystery to light? Coming up next. Hello, dear friends. Once again, today we will show you Kazakhstan as you've never seen it before. While planning a journey in our country, the desire is to make it with some highlight, adventurous and signature, away from the beaten path of Almaty Arbat and paved city streets. Let's ask archaeologists for help. Well, go to Sauran, Turkestan or Rotra. We'll say these who have already went to our legendary ancient settlements. No doubt these sites are magnificent and impressive and therefore enjoy tourists' attention. But after the long historical and archaeological research, they look more like almost completed canvases. But do you know anything about the whiskered burial near Lake Torregue and why the sun is so symbolical for this particular monument? We didn't come here merely for the sake of this mysterious site. We want to learn how an archaeological monument can catch the tourist's eye and what mesmerizes different generations of archaeologists and draws them to investigate in the antiquity. To do this, we invite you to join an excavation of Andronian culture burials just nearby. For now, keep the whiskered barrows in mind. Luckily enough, this is the time and place of undergraduate training. First-year students heard a lot about this at the university, but now they have a chance to literally grind away on studies. They came from Omsk. Let's go and talk to their lead. We have a long-standing international cooperation agreement with Pavlodar State Pedagogical Institute, and we have been collaborating very actively and, I hope, effectively with them over the years. There are archaeologists specifically studying the Bronze Age or settlements or, say, the Middle Ages, and they all have their slang names. Irina, for example, is focusing her research on the Stone Age. In my opinion, it's much more interesting than eras which are close to us in time, because for some of them there are written sources and abundant studies. The sites and objects of the old stone era are not as preserved. The artifacts are neither complete nor spectacular. This is where Sherlock Holmes's induction and deduction method comes into play. And this is exactly the age which hides numerous sensations. Based on found archaeological monuments, the history of Omsk Irtysh Basin starts approximately 10,000 years ago. The age of our most recent unique find of a bone of the so-called Ustkishim man is 45,000 years. He was a Homo sapiens sapiens, but we have not yet discovered any monuments correlating with this artifact. The scientists are sure that the origins of the ust ishim men are somewhere here, in the vast lands of the present-day Kazakhstan. The reasoning behind this theory is that they most likely came to our territory from the south, southwest or southeast. They should have passed this area and left some traces. Therefore, this is exactly the place where we should be looking for the origins of the cultures and peoples which we see in our lands. As of now, the tools of our student archaeologists dig into the soil trampled by the people of a later period. This burial complex is called the Kempiatas tombs. In the 80s, my Almaty colleagues worked here and discovered several enclosures. After that, no excavation had been carried out on this site for a long time. Within the framework of Tuganjer program, we decided to continue the research and establish an open-air museum here.
The latest and the most striking example of the so-called open-air museums is the Beryl Valley of Kings in eastern Kazakhstan. It is open for individual and group excursions. How does an archaeological site become attractive for the public? Firstly, it is necessary to fence it or mark off somehow. Secondly, you need to do some development on the site, fitted with information boards and plates, and if possible, set up a guide service. At Kemper Tas, the archaeologists themselves are the volunteer guides. If they have time, they definitely have answers to some of the questions of Bayana Old District residents. This is Andronian culture, the time of the developed Bronze Age. Preliminary, we can date them back to the 15th century BC, that is, 3,500 years back. There are monuments belonging to the Andronian cultural and historical community, and we have basic dates. I'm talking about absolute dating, that is, received based on carbon and soil testing. Then we try to match this information with artifacts or sites. The advantage of the Adronian culture is that it's very much consistent. For example, the corresponding ornaments and the shapes of vessels. Putting it in simple terms, some indented vessel surface, whereas others did not. Some used geometric shapes as decoration, others used combed ornament. Yet others would scratch, and it is consistent for different areas and groups. A real blessing for an archaeologist. It's all like a passport of an archaeological culture. This funeral complex is a family kin type, that is, it was used by one large Andronian community family. We opened several enclosures or graves, four large ones to be specific, as well as numerous children burials. The former are presented by the period when child mortality is the highest, that is, from birth till one year of age. As children were still young, they would bury them in adult graves, presumably to ensure supervision on the way to the other world. It cannot be called a city or urban culture. These were still just settlements. They were a rather free people. In fact, they were kept in one place only by the graves of their ancestors that basically confirmed their right to a particular area. We have not yet found any traces of large-scale stone-built cities or cyclopean-sized facilities. We hope you didn't forget about the whiskered burials. It's no Temple of Poseidon or Ranko Wat for this matter, but some call it the Bayana Ul Stonehenge. About 2,500 years ago, some people came here and used the place as a burial site. In the center of the burial site, which by the way occupies several hectares and is located in the picturesque place at the bottom of the beautiful mountain range, are right about two dozens of funeral mounds. This is how they sent the people of Tasmolian culture to their final journey during the early Iron Age. The culture received its title based on Tasmol natural boundary in Pamada region where they discovered a typical burial ground. You might ask what does typical mean? Please take a look. A typical site usually consists of a large barrow and smaller size arc-shaped ridges adjoining it called whiskers, made of stone stretching eastward. These whiskered barrows are mainly concentrated in central Kazakhstan or Sari Arka. Bayanaul with the adjacent Ku Mountains and Kakarali is the area where their number is the greatest. This testifies to the fact that the ancient mountains of Bayanaul were a sacral center of the Scythian Sarka era. The luxury of the burial site or sanctuary, which is literally laid with granite plates and cobblestone, alleges that should the Tismolians had have lived here at least a millennium, they would literally pilfer the surrounding mountains. 
Amidst the ruins of this sanctuary site, you can see the interesting stone stilies called mengeas. The ancient would cut them from single-piece stone blocks. The mengeas can be 6 to 8 meters in length and weigh up to several tons. They procured the stone from special quarries, then transported them to the installation site and fitted them vertically. This is one of Mengea foundations. There are several such stone squared columns here, a whole complex made of stelies. Do you mean they were located not only on top of the mound? Exactly. If we go back to the ancient time and imagine this place 2,500 years ago, what we would see? We would see magnificent funeral constructions and beautiful gravestone monuments. As a matter of fact, ancient mausoleums, memorials, and in the center there would be this barrow towering over the whole site, and a chain of these huge stone stelies. The architectural composition of the monument arises the question of how to admire the beauty of the site. We have a drone which can fly over it, but what about the ancient people? Could it be that the scene was intended for just one viewer? The the top part of such stelies always ends with a sheep muzzle. There is also always a circle engraved on them symbolizing the sun. The solar sign is very typical for such monuments, and that's exactly the reason why their popular name is Koitas. As early as in the beginning of 2000s, many stelies and sacred stones at this burial site were still standing vertically and were in satisfactory overall condition. During one of the expeditions to Torai Gir, we were shocked to see that one of the stelies was cut into three segments and built into the foundation of one of the cottages nearby. Thanks to the timely interference of special agencies preserving historical monuments and our engagement, we were able to take the column segments out of the foundation and return them back to the site. If we were just a little late, it would have been lost for the culture and history of Kazakhstan forever. Path breakers, documentary filmmakers, chronologists and keepers of antiquity. What drives all these people trying to preserve our past? Every day you engage with something new and unknown, absolutely unexplored and unclear. An archaeologist should possess sufficient knowledge of soil biochemistry, climatology, physics and general chemistry in order to be able to interpret the data properly. I couldn't and still cannot resist the versatility of my profession. You simply forget about time when you find an artifact, say a bone. It collapses into seconds and minutes. It just looks slow and dull, but in reality, it's absolutely fascinating. This is the first time for me at a Bronze Age site. And this is a rare find. Just look how beautiful they are. Small and skillfully made beads. Lake Torai Gir is located in a tourist zone, and dozens, hundreds, or maybe even thousands of people come here every year. The demand for cultural and archaeological tourism is obvious. An excavation is not only about digging something interesting out, but also restoring it, giving it some tangible form, recreating the initial shape and condition of all these ancient stone constructions for tourists to come and admire. There is a general plan of archaeological sites located in the valley near Lake Toraiger. Each of the monuments will have an author photo map. We will use drones to do that. It will allow us to create the archaeological map of this whole area, which can then be used to develop tourist routes. Archaeological tourism provides an opportunity for the present-day person to touch and understand the remote past. 
The novelty and romanticism characteristic of archaeology are felt the best at such sites. Not everyone can and would be willing to go on an archaeological expedition. But anybody can come to such places as Bayanaul, for example, to feel the breath of nature, history and culture. It's a wonderful opportunity to have an absolutely different look at what surrounds us.